Welcome home to 42 Geek Street, your guide to the world of the geek for that little bit of geek in all of us. Hi, I'm Ren and I'm Mike, and this episode we're talking all things swordcraft as well as packs. So let's jump right onto it with Cards Against Humanity. Hey, it's Mike here from 42 Geek Street, and we're here with one of the guys from Cards Against Humanity. How's it going? Going pretty good. No, uh, not over my jet lag, feeling, uh, feeling pretty spry. All right, that's a good thing. And uh, as you said earlier, we're actually on American soil here. Is that right? Yeah, uh, technically, while we're standing in this booth, we are uh, under the laws of the United States of America. All right, so is there anything I should be worried about at this point? Well, we basically can apprehend you at any time and uh, create a state of uh, military rules. <laughs> um, Just to warn you. Oh, OK, well, well, look, we're going to lead straight into it. Okay. How did you come up with some of these cards? I mean, we, play, we played the game as a team and it was just like insane. We went through about three expansions in one night because you just want to keep on going to see just how wrong the cards get. Yeah. <laughs> what kind of night or what kind of day was involved to create these? Well, I mean, basically everyone who created it were just a bunch of friends from high school. So we, we basically used to just sit in, you know, uh, one guy Elliot's basement. Uh, you know, and uh, his mom would bring us cookies and we'd be just like playing board games and stuff and, and we decided that no game existed that matched our, you know, our sick sense of humor. So we basically made it for ourselves. So it's, it's almost like it's a, it's a gross out card game, is that right? Uh, I mean, it's, it's got some gross stuff in there, uh, but at the end of the day, it's, we're not going for shock value, we're just going for funny and whatever does the trick. Oh, yeah, look, I mean, I think we totally threw out the rule where it was like first to five. It was just, whatever, let's just keep on going. You know, <laughs> just, we didn't yeah. care who won, yeah. let's just keep laughing. And I think that was the great thing about it. Um, with the Australian edition, uh, what's the difference between the standard edition that came out earlier? Uh, so the, the core set has 550 cards in it, um, and uh, we've localized it to your inferior culture. <laughs> We've uh, condescended to, to create an Australian Oh, version. I do something, but I'm damn on American soil. <laughs> yeah, we have cards ready to pop out at any moment. Uh, but basically, we've changed about 15 to 20 percent of the content just uh, to match it to, to Aussie culture. And we, we did our, uh, our sort of cursory research to, no, we actually tried hard and like uh, got a bunch of like Aussie helpers to, to help us write. Uh, some new content, yeah. All right, awesome. So, um, with the bigger blacker box, what's involved with that as well? It's basically a box full of nothing, and for some reason people still buy it, so we <laughs> sell it. Uh, it's, it's just a carrying case for once you have, like, the main game and uh, a bunch of the expansion sets, uh, and it has a few other goodies in there, so... So, now, now that this is out, you've got the Aussie version coming out, is there a plan for uh, another kind of sequel of types or a different kind of game? Uh, we always have ideas for new things kicking around, um, but you know we're obviously not going to uh, you know, publish anything until you know, it's as good as Cards Against Humanity. So for now, yeah, we're going to keep writing expansions. Uh, you know, hopefully we can eventually localize the expansion packs as well, and uh, so you know, we got our work cut out for us. <laughs> well, uh, enjoy packs, and uh, I think I'll be back here to buy another box, because well, let's face it, they're fun. <laughs> awesome. Yeah, thank you so much. All right, cool. Thanks very much. God bless America. And Australia, come on. <laughs> A big thanks to the guys behind Cards Against Humanity as well for having a chat with us and for also giving us a couple of boxes of Cards Against Humanity, the Australian version. Now, if you want to get your hands on one of these boxes, this is what you have to do, Ren. Well, you need to visit our Facebook page. And while there, we need you to answer this. I'm going to grab one of the cards. I've already pulled it out and I'm going to read it out and you need to fill in the gaps. Basically, we're playing the game with you at home. Let's do it. All right. I never truly understood blank until I encountered 
blank. So if you can fill in those gaps, post it in the uh, Facebook page. Let's keep it reasonable, PM but me. funny. PM me. <laughs> and uh, yeah, and then we'll pick out the one that gives us the most he hears and uh, most suitable. And uh, we'll now to um, who gets it, who gets yeah. that. So good luck guys and uh, keep the laughs coming on those too. And we do have two, so we're giving one away now. Cause you said we got a couple and yes. then we'll give one away later. So don't fret if you miss out. Yeah, there will be another opportunity and another card. All right. Well, let's, uh, I think it's time for us to hit the streets. With who? With Baywatch and Nath. So, have you ever had a character on a lunchbox or a bag from when you were at school? Yeah. Yeah, which one was it? The Avengers. The Avengers. That is a great answer. Star Wars or Lord of the Rings? Lord of the Rings every time. Why? Because elves and adventures and because when I was about 18, I went to see them at the movies, Lord of the Rings films, and I got completely into elvish. So, um, Quenya and Sindarin, and I taught myself from the internet, so, yeah, it's a bit lame. <laughs> Adventure! Clowns, yes or no? Uh, no. <laughs> I, I take that as a no. I don't like clowns, no. Not, not of any shape, mm. way or form? Oh, you'd have to seriously cutify it before I could tolerate one, yeah. Right, I can't th think of any cute can clowns I? there, so yeah. that's there definite no then. There ones around um, Shepparton where we live and um, they were hideous. They were advertising a circus, but every time we saw them, we'd just be like, <laughs> So it was a freak show rather than a yeah, circus. Yeah, it felt more like that one, yeah. Excellent. We're back from the bay. Watch with Baywatch and Aeth. So, now we're gonna be cutting to a break. So enjoy the break and we'll see you after these short messages. Mood dice for you at home. The dice that tells you what mood you're in. Whether you're feeling cool or if you're feeling hot, the dice get it installs while it's hot for sale. Get it before it goes cold. Ah, hello there. At X Club for Geeks, we'll show you what and what equals. Hey Mike, I know we've got our spam that's ham in a can, but I don't know, I'm just not feeling it tonight. Not with this, I, it's missing something. It's just not classy. That's classy. That's ham in a glass. That's glam. Welcome back to 42 Geek Street. Yeah. And now we're going to be talking a little bit of Swordcraft. Now, how are we, what, how are we getting there? Well, I come up with an idea that I'm going to use my teleporting. Now, usually I just teleport people in and out. Right. But I'm going to teleport us from here to there. From our, our cave. From, that, from the Geek Cave? From the Geek Cave. Going to use the exit <laughs> by clicking. <laughs> going to take us there. All right. You ready? Yep. I don't like the look of that. I think we should get out of here, man. Can you run? Ah! Oh! Mike, maybe you better head off and do some training while I talk to everybody about Swordcraft. Hi, I'm Kaylee. I'm here at Swordcraft Live Battles at Princess Park in Melbourne to find out what live action roleplay is all about. Tonight we're going to talk to one of the co-founders of this company, we'll talk to a few new players to see what it's like to start, and we'll talk to some veterans who've been playing for years. So let's jump right into it. So how long have you been playing Swordcraft? Uh, this is my third Friday event, so three weeks now, but uh, three separate events, yeah. So you're kind of a new player. Yeah, I'm, I'm fairly newbish. Yeah? Yeah. But... Well, what brought you out to Swordcraft? Well, a friend of mine was, I think he was cycling around the park and he, he saw all of this commotion going on and he, he and I are both gamers and he's told our crew 
and the next week uh, we'd all put together some garb and we just rocked up here after researching a bit online and just started like uh, yeah because like I mean like your costume looks great to be Thank someone you. who's kind of new so Thank I you. really like it yeah so uh, what do you like about the community so far well um, everyone's extremely friendly I mean ridiculously friendly um, you see some guys dressed in chaos armor and looking all evil and bad and then they kill you on the field and then they turn around and say hey you did all right there you know you should come join our band and so forth so that's uh, that's you know they're really accepting of you and they're always helpful like they'll help you uh, make stuff or they'll lend you or give you some stuff that they're not using or give you advice on how you make your own and I'm really into that side of things yeah. as well so yeah. yeah they're a really friendly group here yeah. so you think you'll continue coming back for a while absolutely I'm considering going to the big uh, quest event in May so oh, that'll be so much fun my first quest it should be fun cool. yeah Thanks. Oh, so how long have you been coming out to Swordcraft I've been coming to Swordcraft now for about a year and a half and what do you like about role playing? Role playing is just fantastic because you get to live out an experience which you don't get to see every day. Like um, one day you could be working working at your office job, but the next day you could be role playing and out in some wilderness fighting off some epic dragon. That's very cool. So, how long did it take you to put together this fantastic kit? Um, well, this isn't all of it. The rest of it I haven't put on yet, but it's pretty much taken me a year and a half to put it all together. Just because you see something, and you go. That will look really nice on my character. I'm going to buy that extra. So you know never really finish putting your kit together, I think. Um, and what do you like about the community here? Well, the community is fantastic. Um, when I first started, I didn't really know what I was getting into. And a lot of the best things was just the more experienced players coming up and going, hey, how are you? Nice to meet you. And I've made so many friends from Sawcraft. It's not even funny. My Facebook is more pretty much three-quarters Sawcraft now. It's great. Same with me. <laughs> Thank you. No problem. Thank you. So how long have you been playing Swordcraft? Um, I started, I think, about three years ago. Yeah. Offhand, about three years ago. And what do you do with noob training? Mostly just herd people around the field, explain to them how to play safely, how to follow the rules as best they can, um, and point out to them what they're actually experiencing on the field. It can be very, very confusing the first time you step on, on, the, on the field. And uh, what do you like about doing live action role play? It's an escape. I've got a, a pretty boring job during the week, a uh, pretty stressful job, and this is, I find this very relaxing. It's, it's, it's low stress, it's, um, it's something very different. Um, I do some heavier combat outside Swordcraft, and this is, this is just lightweight good fun. A bit more, a bit more relaxing. Very relaxing. <laughs> and uh, if you had any tips for new players, what would something you'd want them to know be? Stick with your mates. Um, if your mates are fighting someone, pick a fight with that person. Thanks. So you guys are all new to Swordcraft. How long have you guys been going? Uh, about three weeks. Yeah, same. same. I'm a newbie, first time. First night? Three weeks with them. And what, got, what brought you guys out to Swordcraft? Uh, cons. cons. You know, yeah. we saw them cons. and thought it'd be fun to do. Yeah. So same for you guys, conventions? Um, no, I found out through these guys. Okay. And one of my friends was coming down here for a big event and asked if I wanted to join, so that's how I got into it. Sounds good. And what do you guys like about this kind of roleplay atmosphere? We get to use swords. Yeah, it's, it's like being a kid again, and like everyone else is doing it, so it's okay. <laughs> what about you guys? What do you like about doing roleplay? I love everyone's armor and everyone's dressed up. It's fun. some pretty impressive stuff here, isn't there? Yeah. Yeah, really yeah, impressive. The freedom to dress up and come here and fight people for a few hours. Not be judged. Very, 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 very exciting. <laughs> so do you guys think you'll continue coming to Swordcraft? This will be a regular thing for you? Definitely. Yeah, definitely? Cool. Already, you know, planning on spending a fair bit of money. Yeah? <laughs> yeah, we've already started planning out our own warband. Yeah. Oh, nice. Yeah. What do you think your warband will be like? I'm dead all the way. Yeah? yeah? All right, cool. So how long have you been coming out to Swordcraft? Uh, I've been attending Sawcraft now for about uh, two and a half years, I think, since I first got to Melbourne. What do you like about live action roleplay? Uh, live action roleplay is a great uh, thing for people sort of like us because it gives you sort of a little bit of an escape from your everyday life. Uh, it allows you to enact out some of the things you may or may not want to do. It's also just to be honest, for geeks, it's a great bit of exercise. Like, we get out there, we have a run, you meet friends, and then when it's all done, you get to go to the pub afterwards. Good times. So, tell me a bit about your kit. I've, uh, this is fantastic armor. 
Um, thank you. Actually, well, thank you very much. Um, a lot of work's been put into this. This is actually based on um, some real-world influences. We base this on German Landschnecks uh, from around about the 17th century. Um, basically, did these big puffy sleeves and big puffy pants and everything, and wielded pole arms, and we thought that would look cool here, and it does. Yeah. It really does. So. so, if there was someone who wanted to get into this, what would your advice to them be? Uh, my advice is don't be afraid. Everyone has that initial sort of uh, hesitant phase where they're like, I'm not sure, this seems really nerdy, I don't, I'm not sure if it's me, but turn up. Like, the people here are as nice as anything, and you know. Just get out there and do it. Just just do it, guys. So how long have you been coming out to Swordcraft? I've been doing this for nearly two years now. Started January two years ago, so. Well, what do you like about doing live action role play? Like, it's an excuse to go out, do some fighting, have some fun, meet new mates, and just have a good time. And so you've got an amazing kit here. How long did this take to put together? This one I bought about May last year, and I bought all as one kit, but I have this second suit of armor, and it just, as I keep adding to it, really. So what kind of character do you play? I'm known as the Black Knight of Moor. My character name is Ezekiel Varos. He's generally one that doesn't like to play fair, but will still go by the rules. That's classy. That's ham in a glass. That's glam. Car suction, with the power of science, if you need to get into a car without it slowing down, car suction. <coughs> car suction, when you gotta get into your friend's car without it slowing down, car suction is the way. Classy. Suction, with class. Glam. Ah, hello there. Here at X Club for Geeks, we like to show you the you, the why, the one, the two, the three. At X Club for Geeks, we'll show you how it all adds together. Oh, wow. What's this look classy? Glam. Let's get it on. So, you're the co-founder of Swordcraft. What inspired you to start an organization like this? Um, basically, about four years ago, um, I was traveling overseas in, in the UK, and I went to a LARP there, live action role playing game, um, that was set down in some chalk mines. Basically, a group had set up um, where they had miles and miles of tunnels underground, like these tunnels that were used to house um, people during like the bombings during the Second World War, that sort wow. of stuff. So like really extensive tunnels. And I went down there, um, joined with another group, literally like put on a chainmail shirt and set off into these tunnels with this other group. Amazing experience where like we only had a few little light sources. So if you moved away from the group, then you were just in pitch darkness. Yeah. And so it was like a real adventure being in there and we'd have like orcs charge out of the tunnel and attack us and we'd have have um, traps that we'd have to watch out for. And if we actually stepped on, they'd go bang and there'd be a big flash of light in the dark and all that sort of stuff. It was a lot of fun. Sounds amazing. And I came back to Australia and I was on the plane. I was thinking, I really want, really want to do this stuff in Australia. And I'd already done some Googling back when I was back home and hadn't really been able to find much. So when I got back, I really looked into it. And there was a few small groups that were doing stuff yeah. a couple of times a year. And I thought, no, I really want to do this on a weekly basis. So my brother Jeff, um, he had also um, been wanting to do some kind of combat sport for quite a while. He'd come, up, come at it from more of a kind of hardcore fighting perspective, um, whereas mine had been kind of more the adventure perspective. And together we put our heads together, met up with Nelson Gallardo as well. And between the three of us, we came up with the idea of Swordcraft. And we wanted something that people could do every week you could literally walk off the street and play having never done it before because we could just give people a sword and a shield 
and just jump straight into the action. So we also wanted to make it quite idiot proof as well. So <laughs> yeah. that you, the rules wouldn't be too complicated. So that if you gave someone a rubber sword and they hit someone without armor, they wouldn't actually hurt them. Yeah. So around those sort of things. And then we just started the fire and it spread from there. So what would you say your favorite thing is about this community that you've started? Um, in terms of the community, I, I love it when it, the whole community comes together and makes stuff happen. We've got a quest event coming up and while as organisers, really what we do is we put the boundaries around the sandpit and then it's the people that come that really bring all the colour and the life to the events. And, and just the amount of creativity that comes from everything from costume design, um, armouring, weaponry, um, character backgrounds, um, interpersonal uh, conversations that happen at these sort of events yeah. where it's not so much people putting on funny voices and stuff like that it's more like this is my agenda um, I'm gonna try and achieve this and these are my guys and so we're gonna go and talk to some other guys and we know that they want that or we're gonna try and figure out what it is that they want and and so the role play kind of comes more rather from this notion of kind of like yeah putting on funny hats and talking funny and that sort of stuff to more just putting yourself in the role of somebody who is in this context where there's battles and fighting going on around and then how do you actually respond to it? Try that? to think the way they would think. That's yeah. right. So this community, it's grown a lot since you started. How much, how many people would you say you would got your first few weeks when you started this? I think with our very first night we had about 10 or 15 people. And now, what are the numbers this week, vaguely? Um, well, last week we had something like 411. That is a quite an amazing jump. Um, tell me a bit about like you're the only uh, large role play, um, LARP group that runs every week in Australia, aren't you? Um, at the moment, I think that's correct. So there has been another group that ran in Melbourne as well. Um, and I don't think that there was really the, the capacity within Melbourne yet at this stage to have two within Melbourne. Um, there's one in Sydney um, and they're just still really finding their feet. Yeah. But I think give them another year or so and that'll be something really special to go along to as well. Um, and there's also one which has been running for almost as long as us in Canberra and that one's been, that, that's called the Hundred Swords and that goes really well as well. So they get big numbers. I think they run maybe about once a month or so. Oh cool. Um, but they, there's a big following there in Canberra and then there's another group in Brisbane as well which has got quite a so, big following. So live action roleplay is really picking up steam here. I'd say so. And there's all these other genres picking up as well. like. Um, just a couple of weeks ago, there was a really awesome, um, uh, like, uh, apocalyptic future um, one, kind of like Fallout sort of thing. Oh, cool. Um, there's been a zombie one. There's been a number of zombie LARPs that have gone on in Melbourne. Um, there's I've like been a to a few of those, yeah. Yeah, there's like a samurai one as well. Um, so there's, there's LARPing as a, as a thing to do and to be into, I think, is really taking off in Melbourne. And that's something that's always been part of our vision. Like we want to be able to have something that happens every week so that people who might might come along and they're not necessarily that into what we do, but they meet other people who are into live action role playing. And so then it becomes a meeting place. Very cool. So if you could tell something to new players who are thinking about joining this, what would be your advice to someone who'd never done this, never heard of it, wanted to get into it? First thing would be um, come in with an open mind second thing would be coming with a sense of humor i mean at the end of the day we all do look pretty silly uh, <laughs> true <laughs> um, so you've got to be able to laugh at yourself you can't put on this stuff without being able to have a bit of a laugh at yourself because otherwise you'll get offended if other people laugh and and that can happen at times um so that's really important and then i think the third thing is give yourself time to find your feet don't expect to jump in and be the most um badass warrior on day one it takes time to learn skills. It takes time to get the right gear that suits your fighting style. Um, and probably the last thing was would be, see if you can get some friends involved. Because at the end of the day, um, the groups that are the most successful and the ones that last the longest are when there's actually a good group of friends. And a lot of the war bands we have here, that's the teams, um, have um, a, a really welcoming to new people. Um, but as a new person coming in, that can be quite intimidating. So. My suggestion in that sort of circumstance would be either just go and talk to them anyway because they will welcome you, or be bring a bring a group of friends and create your own team. Sounds good. Thank you. No worries. <laughs>
hope you guys had fun watching, and we thank everybody at Swordcraft for having us out tonight. So if you want to know more about Swordcraft, check us out on Facebook. We can give you more details there. Hope to see you out. Run! Get the fairy! We'll back you up. I think I might need my spell book. And a big thanks there to the guys at Swordcraft who are great on the night, really friendly. Very and uh, yeah, very good learning experience. So if you do get a chance, go check it out, peoples. Uh, we also got a chance to check out a bit of Captain Cannonball, which was, uh, we tried out some of their wares. Yes. And, uh, lots and we of also, cheese. But lots of cheese, lots of cheese. And we also got to play with the, uh, the gun on the sword. Yes. So that was a bit of fun that there too. There. Yes, that's right. Uh, now, competition. Make sure you hit up the Facebook page and see all the details, Cards Against Humanity. So be sure to jump on there and win a free Cards Against Humanity pack. And uh, yeah, like us, love us, share us on the FB. So I think that's it for the episode, Ren. Is that right? That's right. We'll catch you all next week. I can't believe Batman and Joker are dead. So let's jump right into it. Hey y'all, I'm Kaylee. We're at Swordcraft. <laughs> Don't, don't you dare. <laughs> okay, <laughs> take whatever. <laughs> Never any battle, guys. Okay.